I really enjoy welding. I also enjoy my safety and well-being, and I'd like to keep from getting injured in my shop and welding environment. There are a variety of hazards that go along with welding. The obvious ones would be burning yourself with hot metal, the risk of cutting yourself on sharp metal, getting debris in your eyes, hot splatter coming off of weld puddles that can actually cause eye damage or severe burns. All of this can be hazardous, and there are many ways to protect yourself from these kinds of risks. I'd like to take you on a tour of my shop, at least the welding area for now, and discuss some of the safety items that I think are absolutely necessary for your shop and for your safe welding environment. Let's explore some of that. To begin with, a welding shop does not have to be a large shop. You can weld in a confined space as long as it's safe. At the bottom of my welding area is this galvanized sheet metal on the floor. Not that it's galvanized, but that I have sheet metal protection for the cement. Helps eliminate the risk of burning the cement or worse yet, actually causing minor explosions when hot metal burns into the cement. I have a metal toolbox and all of my items of any consequence are in that box readily accessible. With drawers that can be closed completely to reduce the risk of any burning material falling into my welding equipment or into the drawers where there might be flammables. Here you can actually see my welding blanket and I'd emphasize that you can use a Kevlar blanket, some have fiberglass weave. You're looking for a temperature that will protect you and your projects from burns through and deterioration over time. The one thing you want to avoid with a welding blanket is the older materials, especially asbestos, that is a known hazard. I built this welding bench and I'd like to emphasize that this is the cornerstone of a shop that is functional and safe. It's a nice heavy plate that not only supports weight but is fireproof and provides the protection that you want. You might want to emulate that in your shop. I put sides on this as you can see readily how protect the area from spatter that might go over the edge and could actually create a burning situation outside of the welding area or in a crevice or a place where you're not aware of what's going on. Flammables, I have them temporarily on the top of the bench. When I'm welding, obviously those materials would not be found on the bench. That's denatured alcohol, acetone, chemicals that I use in the TIG process in particular that are flammable and can cause a great deal of trouble if they catch on fire. I have a backsplash, as you can see, that not only makes a complete enclosure out of my workbench, but taking it a step further, I weld it, strap up the sides of it, and put galvanized sheet between the welding work area and the wall. The wall is sheetrock. I would consider a workbench with an enclosed welding area to be a very safe and smart thing to do. When you're under a welding hood, uh, you cannot see a lot of the action outside of that hood space and could have flammables getting away from you. You can see that this works much to your advantage in containing any of the fire risks. I have a large bench vise here, a rugged unit, supports a lot of weight, very stable, can be grounded if you will. If you're going to weld in that area, uh, you can put a ground clamp on the bench vise itself or on the metal table. The table is also conductive. All of your electrical cords should be grounded and uh, you're constantly under risk of, in addition to fire and cutting and burning yourself with hot metals, it's not out of the realm of possibility to electrocute yourself or cause severe electrical shock from improperly grounded equipment. So I'd emphasize that when you have a fully conductive work area like this, which is obviously safe, you want to make sure that all of your cables are grounded. Always within reach and handy is a set of welding gloves and these gloves are leather. I can lift up metal and hold it temporarily. This is not totally heat proof but it's the first barrier to protecting your hands and your skin from burns. So I'd emphasize that you want to get a pair of quality leather welding gloves. Uh, heavy duty ones for all processes maybe with the exception of TIG, where you can wear uh, deerskin gloves, and we'll get into that in a moment. Leather remains the primary insulator for protecting your hands from hot metals. You can't have too many gloves, and I have my share. Uh, they come in a variety of types and shades and so on, but the main idea is to be certain that you protect yourself and insulate yourself constantly from hot metals. Metals laying around the shop floor can often be hot. Uh, sometimes they're not glowing still, but in fact they're hot enough to burn your hands, cause severe burn. 
burns and it takes a lengthy time for a lot of burns to heal. This is a cap. Uh, you see people wearing these all the time, usually uh, backwards. It's a welder's cap. I would not rely on something like this uh, for anything more than to protect yourself from slag falling off of a metal cutting job or something to that effect. This is not an exceptional insulator, uh, nor is it intended to be fireproof or anything like that. One thing I highly recommend is a leather coat, and in this case, uh, leather welding jackets with a snap apron like this is extremely valuable. Uh, it protects you in two ways. One, obviously, from burns and uh, from hot metal. You want to make sure that your collar is snapped up, that your buttons are all snapped. The second way it protects you to serve as a UV barrier or ultraviolet light from all types of arc welding is dangerous, hazardous, can lead to cataracts in your eyes, can lead to uh, skin cancer and, and issues with uh, skin damage. So this not only protects you in a direct sense from hot metal, this will also protect you from UV, although it may seem uncomfortable to wear something like this in the summertime, and believe me, at 105 degrees Fahrenheit uh, in ambient temperature, it can get really hot around a welding project. I still make a point of wearing this, even if I have to reduce the amount of time that I can stay under the hood and continue welding. And the other thing is to make sure this is snapped up, as I mentioned earlier, to be certain that you don't have hot metal or cuttings or slag or anything like that falling down inside this, because once you are strapped in with the back straps and everything else attached, you cannot get out of this leather that quickly. So be careful to keep it sealed, keep yourself covered up, keep yourself protected not only from heat, but from UV, from hot slag, and from contact with molten hot metals and hazardous materials. For TIG welding, I will use a lighter glove so that you have better dexterity. Uh, you can imagine how these gloves would be rather clumsy when you're working with a TIG torch or doing uh, handcraft close-up work. These deerskin gloves, happen to be Tillman's, available through HTP America, have come in very handy for TIG welding, where you have a full sense for what you're holding on to and much better dexterity. Look at the HTP America catalog for items like this for your TIG welding. I cannot overstate the need for eye protection at all times. And when you are performing different cutting and welding operations, there's a need to protect your eyes in two ways. Obviously, you want to protect your eyes from hot metals or anything of that nature, including spatter of uh, molten welding puddles. But in addition to that, you want to protect your eyes from UV damage, which can cause severe burns, can cause cataracts, and can cause blindness and issues with your eyesight over time. You can avoid all of that by wearing the proper helmet. There are different types of welding helmets available uh, for gas welding, Shields are often sufficient. I like a shield personally. You can weld it with goggles if you prefer. The shield is very quick to drop down. It can be easily raised and lowered. It offers a peripheral protection, which I like a lot. And uh, you can have interchangeable shields. And in this case, I'm using the welding shield, but you can put a clear shield on for use when you are doing operations like surface grinding or working at your grinder. And those are places where you can get metal in your eyes and have uh, severe issues or damage to your eyes from flying debris. And I was working on a Land Cruiser that required a lot of metal fabrication with an engine conversion to a V8, working with a surface grinder, and I was in the process of grinding, haphazardly not using protective eye gear. A piece of material, in this case metal splinter, came off a grinding wheel and went into the white of my eye, fortunately, into the sclera, and it took three days for me to realize that there was something going on there, and by the time I got to the ophthalmologist, I actually had uh, rust forming around this steel sliver. As a result of that, uh, I had to have that removed. So you can avoid all of that by simply wearing eye protection and shielding. When it comes to stick welding, MIG welding, or TIG welding, you need arc protection in which case you have your choice of helmets that have a fixed lens shaded to the proper shade and you want to look at the charts to make sure that you're using the right shade for the welding process. Or you can do what I'm doing here and that is use an automatic shade that permits you to be able to see the weld area 
until the arc actually strikes. And in this case, in one twenty-five thousandth of a second, this shielding will come into effect and protect my eyes. That's fast enough for me to avoid burns or any kind of damage to my eyes and to protect me from uh, arc flash, which is not only painful, but over time, enough arc flash can cause permanent eye damage. Make a point of buying a quality helmet. Make sure the helmet protects you from hot debris. This leather on the bottom of my helmet is a mandatory. This actually overlaps with my leather gear in such a way that my neck is protected, thyroid area, uh, and the neck skin from UV damage. A lot of welders, uh, especially years ago, would use a handheld shield and in the process find that they were getting scorched on their necks and skin below the shielding or below the helmet. And in those cases, the end result was uh, severe damage to the skin, obviously a higher risk of skin cancer. So these hazards can all be avoided by the proper use of gear. I'd like to conclude this session by sharing that there are a lot of other hazards in the environment around your shop. The actual risk of a fire breaking out means that you better have a quality fire extinguisher and have it handy. Another hazard are welding fumes and working with various materials and even the shielding on some of your rods, even the alloys that you're working with and the filler rods you're working with. There are often hazards in MSDS comments about the many hazards or cancer-causing agents that can be found in these materials. In the actual sessions regarding welding processes, You'll see me go into detail about protecting yourself from fumes using uh, fan systems and evacuation or vacuum fans to keep the area clear of hazardous fumes that could cause damage to your lungs or even be drawn into your system. So pay close attention in the welding sessions, in the cutting sessions, to my comments regarding safety. This is just a brief overview, and there are many other things for us to be concerned about. We want your work environment to be safe. We want you to enjoy welding as a process, and we don't want you to suffer poor health or have health risks as a result of being a quality welder.